Today, I put my body to the test yet again for science in order to answer a question that I get asked all the time, and that is, can you take potassium supplementation or increase your dietary intake of potassium while you're taking an ACE inhibitor, an angiotensin receptor blocker, or one of these other medications that's commonly prescribed for treating blood pressure. Now, remember that everything I do here is for education and information only and should not be a substitute for proper medical advice. What I do to my own body may not apply to you. Everybody is different. So please talk to your doctor before you make any changes to your diet or supplementation. And I hope that this, at a minimum, helps you have an informed conversation with your doctor about what's right for you. Now, in my last video, I demonstrated that taking up to 5,000 milligrams of potassium daily through diet and supplementation does not affect blood levels if you have healthy kidneys and you're not taking any other medications. And I've also done a lot of work on the impact that a high potassium diet or potassium supplementation can have on blood pressure. In fact, studies show that people with the highest intake of potassium do have a much lower incidence of hypertension. And if you do have high blood pressure, plenty of research is out there showing that increasing your dietary potassium to the levels recommended by experts, that 4,700 to 5,000 milligrams daily, can have a significant impact on those blood pressure levels and may obviate the need for some of those blood pressure medications that we all take. But let's say you go to the doctor and you're diagnosed with high blood pressure. Well, chances are the first thing they're going to tell you is go start taking one of these medications. And what medications are we talking about? We're talking about ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, thiazide diuretics, renin inhibitors, and more. And the one thing that all these medications have in common is they all to some degree impact the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, or the RAAS. Now, the research shows us that increasing your dietary intake of potassium actually turns off renin production and may make it so that you don't need some of these medications that work downstream from potassium to impact that system, turning it off. If you want more on this, please watch my other video on this topic. I dig into it in great detail. I'll leave a link up above. But the problem is that all of these medications have a possible contraindication to taking potassium or increasing dietary potassium. In fact, if you just look on a simple Google search and you pull up the first thing that comes up is your WebMD, and right there it says, be careful about taking potassium or increasing dietary potassium if you're taking these medications. And while in some cases it's not an absolute contraindication, Certainly, the common teaching is that if you're taking one of these medications, it impacts the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system, that you should avoid potassium. Well, this is great news for the drug companies because if you were to increase your dietary intake of potassium, you might not need those blood pressure medications, and you would certainly have a significantly reduced risk of stroke, heart disease, kidney disease, and more all of which, of course, are the things that we start taking a lot of medications for as we age. So perhaps the most common question I get asked is if I'm taking an angiotensin receptor blocker or an ACE inhibitor, which are super common treatments for first-line treatment of hypertension, can we increase our dietary intake of potassium or take a potassium supplement? So I'm going to show you the research on this, and then I'm going to show you what happened when I put my own body to the test. Last week, I went to the pharmacy and asked for a prescription for lisinopril, which is the most commonly prescribed ACE inhibitor here in the United States. So this one's called lisinopril. It's for blood pressure. You take it once a day, day or night, it doesn't matter. Lisinopril, 10 milligrams? Yeah. Okay. And then is there anything I need to be worried about for in terms of diet or supplements or anything that would be... No, nothing kind of interacts with this one. And I was actually thrilled to see that the pharmacist did not tell me not to increase my dietary potassium. I was kind of anticipating that might happen, but my pharmacist is good. And he said, no, no dietary restrictions, nothing to worry about. But he did say that the 10 milligrams was a rather low dose. And I agree, we go up to 40 milligrams on lisinopril. So 10 is really kind of a starting dose for hypertension treatment. So my original plan was to take 10 milligrams of lisinopril and then over the course of four days increase that to 20, 30, and 40 milligrams of lisinopril daily while at the same time taking 2,000 milligrams of potassium in addition to my usual dietary intake. Now unfortunately after two days of taking the lisinopril 10 milligrams I went to the lab and <laughs> it was packed solid. There was no way I was going to get my labs done that day. So I left I tried again tomorrow and same thing and <laughs> no can do. 
Well, by day three, I was getting a little frustrated and I said, I've got to get this video out. So I went ahead and started to take up to 40 milligrams of lisinopril in a single day. And I coupled that with 4,000 milligrams of potassium. So I took 10 milligrams of lisinopril every two or three hours. I didn't want to take it all at once because I didn't want to bottom out my blood pressure. I don't usually take high blood pressure medications. So I was a little concerned about what would happen. And I took about 4,000 milligrams of potassium, again, spaced out through the day. But I was really excited to see what was going to happen with my labs. And just to be sure, I actually did two tests. I did a potassium blood level, which is what uh, the test I ran last time when I was looking at potassium blood levels without taking the lisinopril. And in this case, I did the potassium blood levels again, but I also checked my ACE levels. Now, the angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, is the enzyme that lisinopril inhibits. And actually what we can do is we can check for ACE levels to see if we're taking enough of the lisinopril to actually suppress that system. So I wanted to show that number one, my ACE levels were low, showing that I was taking the medication. And number two, see what happened to the potassium. Does it shoot through the roof the way, you know, a lot of us are taught to believe. Now, before I get into the actual results of my experiment, I want to show you the research that I base this experiment on because I don't put my body to the test lightly. I want to make sure that I'm doing this based on what's actually been studied and proven before. So let's take a look at that research together, and then I'll show you what happened when I went to the lab. So this study looked at 10 patients taking an ACE inhibitor and 10 patients taking an angiotensin receptor blocker for hypertension, and we compared the effect of taking a normal potassium diet of about 3,000 milligrams daily and compare that to a high potassium diet of 5,000 milligrams of potassium daily from food. And these patients were studied for four weeks and blood levels were taken at baseline, at the middle of the study and at the end of the study to show what happened when we went from a low potassium diet to a high potassium diet. And interestingly, really nothing changed. If we look at the group that was on the low potassium diet, which kind of reflects most healthy eaters, about 3,000 milligrams daily, the level stayed at 4.0 at the beginning, middle, and end. It literally did not change at all, which I guess makes sense because we didn't change any of the variables, right? The diet stayed the same, and they were taking the same medication as when they came into the trial. But for the high potassium group that had a significant increase in their potassium intake from 3,000 to 5,000 milligrams daily, we saw only a tiniest change in the blood levels that was not statistically significant. So from baseline of 4.1, midpoint of the study 4.3 and at the end of the study 4.2 really within the error of recordings for the lab so these little variations we're not going to give much um, credence to so basically we saw no change in potassium levels of the blood when we're taking these medications at commonly prescribed doses and going from a average potassium diet that really doesn't have a protective effect for blood pressure to the type of high potassium diet, 5,000 milligrams daily, that does have the ability to support healthy blood pressure. Now, if you want more information on how to get 5,000 milligrams of potassium from diet, do not worry. You can check uh, my last video on nutrition here, and I give a whole overview of what it looks like to get 5,300 milligrams of potassium from diet alone. And then if you check the description, I'll leave a link to where you can download that entire meal plan for free and take a look at it and see if you can increase your own potassium intake through diet alone. So you may be wondering what happens if you get your potassium from supplementation, not from diet alone. And that's been studied as well. In this trial, the investigators looked at 18 patients and gave them lisinopril, which is an ACE inhibitor, with potassium supplement 1600 milligrams in one dose. So in this case, we compared what happens to their potassium levels in their blood when they take the potassium alone and when they take it with the lisinopril. And as you can see by these two graphs, there was literally no change in blood levels of potassium when a dose of 1600 milligrams of potassium supplement was given with or without the lisinopril. So there's some evidence between these two trials that whether you're getting your potassium from supplementation or from diet, that it may be safe and effective to be increasing your dietary intake of potassium 
through diet or supplementation in order to have a preventive effect for certain age-related diseases down the road and also to support healthy blood pressure. So I definitely wanted to recreate this experiment and I wanted to see what happens if I put this research to the test in my own body. Now, definitely do not try this at home without your doctor's supervision. This is simply to inform a good conversation between you and your doctor as you decide what's best for you. But never one to do things halfway. I went ahead and did the 4,000 milligrams of potassium, the 40 milligrams of lisinopril, and I showed up at the lab eager to see what would happen. Okay, here I am at the lab. I just finished my last dose of potassium and I'm gonna go check the blood levels, so wish me luck. All right, just finished my blood draw. They did not let me video, but there's the proof. So we'll see what the results show. And look at these results. My blood potassium level, shockingly, was right in the normal range, 4.5, right in line with what we just saw from the other trial on lisinopril and potassium, solidly in the normal range. And as you can see by my ACE levels, the lisinopril was doing its job. My ACE levels were undetectable. Now, normal should be anywhere between 10 and almost 70, and mine were undetectable. So we can clearly see that at least in my case, and again, taking only the one medication and with normal renal function, normal kidney function, my blood level stayed static. So I think it can give us some reassurance that taking these medications does not lock us into the type of low potassium diet that's associated with the worst health outcomes, that there is ample room to consider increasing your dietary intake of potassium I gave you some resources for that and to consider whether supplementation might be right for you. Now, definitely talk to your doctor before you make any changes. And I want to give you a couple of ideas for that conversation that I often have with my own patients. Number one is let your doctor know that the expert guidelines suggest that physicians should be recommending that patients execute lifestyle changes, including hitting recommended targets for potassium intake through diet while prescribing first-line treatments for hypertension. We are not supposed to be telling you, the patient, to not do the right things for diet while you're taking the medications. So while every body is different, you can have that conversation with your doctor and see if there's any reason why you shouldn't be trying to hit these targets through diet alone while you're taking these medications. Number two is when you're talking to your doctor, you can have a conversation about whether or not taking potassium supplementation, if you're having trouble hitting these targets through diet alone, makes sense for you. Not everybody has the time or the money to uh, you know, cook all this food and eat in a way that gets you to 5,000 milligrams of potassium daily. In fact, if we look at the research, only 2% of the American population hits these targets on any regular basis. So if you're having trouble, it's either going to take a little bit of work on your part or you're going to need a little bit of help. And before you start taking those supplements, go talk to your doctor and see how he, he or she suggests that you handle it. And lastly, depending on how severe your hypertension is, you may want to consider a drug holiday. Now, this is a conversation that you would have with your doctor where you say, hey, listen, my blood pressure isn't that high without the medication. I really want to do something holistically that is going to fix the problem rather than just treat the symptoms. So what do you say we take a holiday from the drugs for a few weeks, make some lifestyle changes, follow the blood pressure, and then reassess as you go? Now, these are conversations that you want to have with your doctor. These are not my recommendations to you, but they're ways that I usually help my patients make the transition from taking drugs that they may not need to a healthy lifestyle that supports long-term better outcomes. And of course, if you're going to be making any of these changes, your doctor may want you to check your potassium levels along the way. You've seen me check my potassium levels several times over the course of the last few videos, and it's a worthwhile way to help you feel safe and secure in the way you're treating your body. So I hope this video was helpful. I'll leave some links in the description for helpful resources. And of course, thank you for watching. I will see you next time.